interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special bulletin from Indianapolis. The unknown man who last night strangled Martha Chase, beautiful co-ed in Cambridge, Indiana, is undoubtedly the same one who only a week ago murdered Beatrice Bunce in Beechwood, Michigan. This fact was proven when a composite picture drawn from various bits of description given by those who claim to have seen the phantom murderer revealed the following outstanding features. Height, approximately six feet. Brown hair, worn rather short. Eyes, as far as can be ascertained, brown. But the most remarkable feature of the composite picture is the face itself, for it is long, thin, and intelligent, suggesting the student. According to those who allegedly saw the murderer, he was wearing a light gray double-breasted suit. Except for this hearsay description, there are no other clues to the identity or whereabouts of the studious strangler. Nevertheless, police are combing the entire Middle West in a frantic effort to apprehend the criminal. Breakfast, Marcus. You're late. Hot cakes. Yes, Mrs. Murphy. Be right there. Nothing worse than cold hot cakes. First time in ten years Mark's been late for breakfast. First time in ten years he's took a vacation. Wonder when I'll get a couple of weeks off. Nice boy, Mac. Give me full room and board for the whole two weeks. You know how many gas meters I read yesterday? Ninety. Do you know how many I read last year? 7,324. I didn't scream once yesterday. You know how many I read the year before that? Maybe I ain't gonna scream anymore. People should have things to do. Oh, it sure feels good knowing your own milk route. I hope I've still got it when I'm 50. Brought me this bracelet, too, all the way from Indianapolis. Nice boy, Mark. Of course, Mrs. Murphy, I can't wear jewelry in the library. Gets in my way when I'm marking the book. Jumping Jehoshaphat. A murder right next door. <coughs> next door? Well, practically next door. Cambridge, Indiana. That's only 200 miles from here. Phantom murder kills another victim by strangulation. <coughs> He did it with his bare hands. Oh, stop creating excitement. You know Rosie can't take it. Leave the table, Rosie. You know, Ma, you ought to get rid of Rosie or stop taking in boarders. Oh, Ma, give her a kick. She's old enough to quit putting on shows. Nobody claps. Scream in the bathroom and be sure you shut the door. Say, si, what about the murder? Read some of the gory detail. Uh, was she a young girl? Why'd you kill her, pretty? Si? Was she pretty? <coughs> oh, Marcus. Morning, everybody. Welcome Hi, home, Plutocrat. Hello, Marcus Aurelius Born. Have a nice time on your vacation. Oh, it's just beautiful, Marcus. Mm hmm New suit. Good pickings, eh, Mark? Where'd you go on your vacation, Mark? Up near Cambridge, Indiana. Cambridge? And you must have been in on all the excitement. Yes. Was the murdered girl well known in Cambridge? Murdered girl? I don't know, Sally. I wasn't in Cambridge. I was 50 miles from there. Gee, that's too bad. Look what you missed. Ain't you sorry? I'd be sorry if I missed something important, like Ma's hotcake. Oh, go on with you. <laughs> Seen the old man yet? Mr. Hammond nodded to me this morning. Oh, he was early today. He came roaring in about nine sharp. Must have had to entertain his wife this weekend. Say, speaking of dames, have you heard the latest? I never remember jokes. No, this is murder. Don't you ever read the papers? I haven't read a paper in two weeks. I had a wonderful time on my vacation. It was so peaceful and quiet. But this is the second one in a week. Tell me about it after I've had my lunch. But isn't it too early for lunch? I'd like to open an account. Yes, ma'am. A personal account. Well, Mr. Hammond takes care of the new accounts, miss. LaSalle, Helene LaSalle. I'm the new manager of Fulton's 5 and 10. Something tells me I'm going to start shopping at Fulton's right away. Don't tell me that shirt didn't come from there. <laughs> you must have a co-maker who will guarantee... Uh, see what you can do about a co-maker and come back this afternoon. Well, Mr. Hammond, I can't... Uh, shall we say 2 o'clock? Uh, born, I... Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Miss LaSalle, this is Mr. Hammond, President Hammond. Oh. How do you do? How do you do? Miss LaSalle would like to open a new account. Of course. I'll attend to it immediately. Step right this way, young lady. I'll be seeing you. Any time you wish to make the deposit. Oh, sooner than that, Mr. Bourne. We're neighbors. I live with my Aunt Jenny right next door to Mrs. Murphy's boarding house. How nice. For your aunt. My desk is over here, Miss LaSalle. He just loves to open new accounts. And I want 
put a grill in the fountain so we can serve lunches. You, you have some very interesting ideas, Miss LaSalle. Thank you. Uh, what are you doing for dinner tomorrow night? You see, I own an interest in Fulton's, and I might be able to give you some suggestions. What time tomorrow night, Mr. Hammond? Don't worry, Miss LaSalle. Everything will be taken care of. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hammond. Very kind. Hello. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were someone else. You condescended to visit my dull little sanctum. And here I am, just going out to lunch. Have you had yours? I'd like a book. But you won't want to read while we're eating. I want a book, Sally. Oh, yes, of course. What book, Marcus? This one? Well, you can take the book now, and the card will be ready for you when we come back from lunch. Uh, I'll pick it up later. Goodbye, Sally. Why are you following me? You dropped your book. Why are you following me? Brad Dolan, special investigator. I just want to ask you some questions, Mr. Bourne. But I'm on my way to lunch. I only have a few minutes. That's all we need, just a few minutes. <laughs> Marcus Bourne, a murderer? I do declare. If that isn't the most ridiculous accusation I ever heard. Accusation is hardly the word. This is merely a routine investigation. Oh, yes, Joe. It's Mr. Dolan's duty to be concerned. After all, my resemblance to the murderer's composite photograph is very startling. Oh, piddle and tush. Routine investigation. Startling resemblance. <laughs> ten years he's had that face. I remember when I walked into the bank ten years ago and saw him for the first time. Mamie was with me. Uh, uh, Mamie, that's my wife. Well, we'd just come into the bank, and I guess I was fully 30 feet away from Marcus's cage when I saw him for the first time. So I just turned to Mamie, and I says, Mamie, now there's a nice face. And Mamie says... I'm sure Mrs. Charter said something very appropriate. But it won't be necessary to recall Mr. Bourne's first 10 years in uh, medallion. I'm only interested in the last two weeks. Well, of course, I didn't go on his vacation with him, but I did see him come back. You did? Yeah. I seen you getting off the train last night when I went to meet Mamie. Mamie had to go to Cambridge's the air to help Lulu with her canning. Lulu was getting old. Everything she put up last year spoiled. Uh, this train, what time did it... Mamie left Cambridge at 7 o'clock. No, no, I mean what time did it get in here? 11 o'clock, it always does. The girl was murdered at 9. Well, that takes care of that. 11 o'clock at night, and always does. When I believe Cambridge at 7 o'clock at night, you always get here at 11 o'clock at night. Well, I was helping Mamie to get off, and I happened to look up toward the other end of the train, and I seen Marcus getting off, too. So I just turned to Mamie, and I says, Why, Mamie, I says, there's that nice Marcus born. And Mamie says, well, so it is. And here he's been on this same train, and I don't even see him until he gets off. I was in the smoking car. Oh. 
Well, I'm sorry to have bothered both of you, but I'll make it up to you, Bourne. How about letting me buy your lunch tomorrow? Well, the day after that, I'll be in this territory for the rest of the week. I always eat at home. Oh, uh, don't forget your book. <laughs> it would have worried me, too, if I hadn't noticed the way you picked it up. Quite by accident. Thanks, Chief. Go along. As Chief Charter said, that's what's so funny. A guy with a nice face like yours. So quiet and everything. That's what I say. How could anybody suspect Marcus of being a murderer? You don't understand, Sally. He didn't suspect me. He? Who's he? A special investigator from Indianapolis, Indiana. Gosh. Did they give you the third degree like they do when you take your stories with lights and little drops of water that keep dripping on your head? Yeah, only Marcus wasn't the chief actor. He's just a stand-in for a murderer. They must have heard about your reputation as a lady killer, huh? <laughs> Uncomfortable this evening, isn't it? In fact, it's kind of hot. Don't you think so, folks? Hi. Hello, Miss LaSalle. Hi, Helene. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Miss LaSalle. You two know each other already? We met at the bank. Marcus. Don't worry about that book. I won't say anything about it. I wouldn't either if I were you, Sally. I'm bringing it back to the library in the morning. I'm not interested in reading the psychology of a homicidal. It's no use, Sally. He can't be kidded. But I'll bet you can. <laughs> Come on, Rosie. Get the table set. And Jenny. And Jenny. Yes, dear? I'm going for a walk. Now, Helene, you don't have to bother with them. I'm going for a walk. But, dear, I always sweep off the walk in the morning. Oh, darling, <laughs> goodbye. Oh, walk? Why, of course you can, child. You don't have to ask me about things like that. Run along, dear. Goodbye. Sal. Oh, oh, hello, Marcus. I thought we could walk along together. An evening stroll isn't a habit of mine, but tonight... Yeah, I don't blame you. It sure is a haunted house you live in. What a cast of characters. Hypocrites. Funny thing about coincidence. Such a whole existence. Change your whole life sometimes. It won't upset mine. Oh, maybe it will for a few days. Sooner or later, somebody will be out with the wrong husband, or the local black sheep will marry the nice girl, or... Some poor fellow take one drink too many, and the gossips will have something new to talk about. You're not afraid, are you, Marcus? Afraid? No. No, not really. I kind of thought you might be. I wanted you to know if you were that you have a friend next door. It's kind of chilly, isn't it? Well, let me help you with your coat. Okay. What's wrong? Hands. So cold. You, I believe. What's the use of trying to lie to people like you? Sure. It's Mr. Harry Sinclair Hammond. He wants to give me some suggestions for our dinner engagement tomorrow night. What's his wife like? Oh, Mrs. Hammond is. They have a very lovely daughter, Brooke. She has great understanding. She understands her father and hates him. Good night, Elaine. That's the trouble with guys like you. You'll never get to be a bank president. You'll never even have enough money to buy an interest in a dime store. Why even your thrills come secondhand? Night, Marcus. Father's desk is over here. Yes, Mother, I know. But I want to say hello to Marcus. Oh, but he, he isn't in anyway. Yes, he is. Oh, him. Oh, yes, of course, he's always here. But your father isn't. Mother, please, can't you just sit down and wait for him? Certainly, dear. Marcus. Bro. Yes, I know. I've been back in town a week. But I've had so many things to do. Oh, it isn't that. You look older, Brooke. 
It's the hairdo. Glamour, sophistication. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I don't know. Somehow sophistication isn't for you. Oh, but remember, I have a very old soul. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember the time you fell in love with that old chemistry professor with a beard. <laughs> that wasn't a beard, Marcus. It was a Van Dyke. And anyway, I took your advice and changed to Greek literature. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't laughed like that since you left. Remember the time I gave you the money to lend Billy Snyder to take me to the dance? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, why must you always come here when I'm busiest? But how were you sent for us? Uh, that is, you sent for Brooke. I did? Oh, yes. Well, where is she? Uh, she's over there with that, uh, that teller. Ah, Marcus Bourne. Yes. But do you think she should be talking to him? Why not? She's known him ever since she was a kid. Yes, I know he's very charming, but people say he looks like a murderer. Mother. It's too bad your life is so empty you have to spend your time listening to such ridiculous gossip. While you go spending my money, look at this bill the music store sent me. $35 for records. Beethoven? Well, that's wrong. Good. It was Tchaikovsky. Is that what you learned in your first year at finishing school? How to spend your father's money on stupid music? You never taught me to value money, father. And now that you own an interest in Fulton's five and ten... Oh, does he? Perhaps I could get a special discount. Or do Fulton's carry the better things? Uh, Daphne? Uh, how would you like to buy yourself a new hat? A, a hat? Why? Or, uh, or a coat. A coat? Why, no. Oh, yes, yes. Harry, you remembered. Hmm? Our anniversary tomorrow, and you remembered. Oh, uh, why, yes. Why, why, of course I remembered. Thank you. Marcus, I've got to see you. Can you meet me at nine tonight in the park? What is it now, a summer romance with a millionaire? Marry him. No, Marcus, I'm serious. It's about father. Oh, did your mother find out? I don't know, I don't want her to. Marcus, please, at least let me talk to you about it. Excuse me. I'd like to cash this check, please. Well, Warren. Hello. I don't think you need any identification. Marcus, I'll have to run. It will be all right, won't it? The park tonight at nine. The bench by the statue. Please, Marcus. You gave me ten dollars too much. Never happened before. <laughs> Nerves, that's all. she's got since he went on that vacation. 
Well, I bet you keep them warm in the oven. There's nothing worse than cold hot cakes. Not yours, Mrs. Murphy. Hot or cold, they're always good. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Good morning, Marcus. Sir, Marcus? Oh, thank you. What lovely earrings. <laughs> thank you, Marcus. I didn't think anybody would notice them. Well, I... <clears throat> oh, that's very pretty, Rose. You should always wear a flower in your hair. You're sure handing out a line to the women this morning, Mark. What's come over you? Jumping Jehoshaphat, another murder. <coughs> oh, shh. Where? Right here in Ohio. In this very state? Yeah, the daughter of a bank president. <coughs> Scream in the bathroom, Rosie, and be sure to shut the door. Oh, Ma, let her sit. She ought to begin to face things. Si, where did it happen? What town? Westerman. Only 90 miles from here. Well, go on. What else? This one was strangled just like those other ones. They're looking for the same man, the phantom murderer. That's the one that looks like you. Are you going to start that all over again? Oh, now, Marcus, Si's only kidding. I'm sorry, but just when everyone's forgotten, it starts all over again. Nobody's accusing you, Mark. There's a maniac loose. And he never even ate his hotcakes. Marcus! Well, you're the one who stood me up. Come on now, explain yourself. I'm sorry, Broca. It's so difficult to explain. Why? I lay down to rest after dinner, and I just fell asleep. I didn't wake up until after 11. Too late to call you then. I wish you had called me. Something terrible happened to me. Rose. Oh, I managed to escape. Some man chased me all the way home, practically. I suppose he was after my purse. That maniac murderer. I know. I read the papers. But he didn't get me, did he? Oh, Marcus, I still want to talk to you about Father. Can we make it tonight for sure in the park? Brooke, I... I... What's wrong with you? That new murder, my resemblance to... Ah, oh, now, you're not going to start that all over again. I don't start it. It's Cy Walsh and the Murphys and... I'm afraid I'll have to leave you now. There's someone waiting for me. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hammond. Born. Yes, I know. I'm an hour and five minutes late. We all know that, including the paymaster. But I do expect an explanation. Sorry, there is none. I saw you talking to Brooke. This had nothing to do with Brooke. Let me finish, please. I saw you talking to Brooke, and I really don't think you should see her so much. There was a time when Brooke was younger, when she was just a child, her fondness for you was understandable then. But now that she's grown up, I... Well, that is, Mrs. Hammond and I. Well, we'd rather not have you encourage her friendliness. You know how those things sometimes end. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Miss... Uh, Miss LaSalle. I came to make a deposit. I thought you came to see Mr. Hammond. It's a funny thing about guys like you. Even when you're right, you're wrong. Right after I'd finished the supper dishes, I'd gone upstairs and his room door was open, and there he was, lying sound asleep on his bed. Seemed a shame to waken him, so I just switched off the light. I didn't see him at all last night after supper, not at all. I heard him. About 12 o'clock it was. I could hear him walking around his room. Now, you see, he was there all the time, and it was 4 o'clock in the morning when that girl was killed in Westerman. 90 miles from here. How could Mark get there and back without a car? A car? There was a car. Yes, Mr. Walsh, there was a car. Well, 
I was just going to say there was a car stolen about 11 o'clock last night in front of Jeffrey's hardware store. It was back there again this morning and... Yes, I know all about that. Well, whoever did it drove far enough to use eight gallons of gas. Well, that matter is being thoroughly investigated. Mark slept late this morning. It was the second time. Yeah, that's right. The other time was the morning of the last murder. <laughs> Mr. Bourne has a very loyal, considerate friend in you, hasn't he, Mr. Walsh? How do you do? How do you do? Well, how do you do? This is Mr. Dolan, Sally. He's a special investigator. Oh, about Marcus. I suppose by now you searched the poor man's room and found all kinds of instruments of torture hidden oh, there. I have no intention of searching Mr. Bourne's room. Oh, Mr. Dolan just wants to prove that Marcus was here all night. Well, he certainly was. Yes? Well, I got up to take a vitamin pill, and naturally I had to pass Marcus's room. I heard him snoring very loudly, so I tapped on the door. I thought that would make him stop, and it did. He cleared his throat a little, and I guess he must have turned over. Anyway, it was quiet after that. Now, what time was that, Miss Lukens? Four o'clock. Are you sure, Sally? I'm doing the questioning here, Mr. Walsh, and I hardly think any more is necessary for the present. Goodbye, Mrs. Murphy, and thank you very much. Oh, it's just my daughter, Rosie. She forgot to shut the door. Get away from me! Rose, please, that man, Mr. Dolan. Stay away from me! Rosie! She was in my room going through my things. But I, I, I don't understand it, Marcus. Rosie never did that before. I brought a present for her, too. Well, that was awfully nice of you, Marcus. Some flowers for you. Habit's a funny thing, Ma. I live by habits, I guess. And now when they're broken, so many strange things happen, it seems. I can't stay very long. Mother's alone, as usual. Marcus, don't think I'm a meddlesome brat. Oh, Brooke, how can you say that? I'm sorry, but honestly, we were quite happy until Miss Helene LaSalle arrived in town. Oh, Marcus, something's got to be done because Mother is... Is your mother ill? She has been for years. I had to grow up before I could see the reason. Children are so stupid and believing. Yes, at least they don't know the real meaning of fear. Marcus, won't you talk to Miss LaSalle? Well, I, I don't know her very well. I hate to meddle in people's affairs. I, I never have. Don't think I don't want to help you, Brooke. It's just that things are so mixed up now. I understand. It was wrong of me to bother you. No, Brooke, wait. Of course. Of course, now I'll have the chance to say something to her. I won't be seeing you much anymore. Your understanding father's forbidden that. Maybe, maybe Helene will understand. We'd better go now, Brooke. And don't worry about Helene. I make myself comfortable, do you? Mm. Gee, just look at these shoes. They're practically new. Where did you get the mud? That small town Napoleon. So romantic. He felt like walking, so we walked along the riverbank. What's on your mind? You aren't very serious about him, are you, Elaine? Serious? You seem to forget that Mr. Hammond practically owns the dime store. What is on your mind, Marcus? It's about you and Hammond. It probably doesn't mean anything to you, but it's very important to somebody. It's Brooke. Oh, so that's it. Brooke. 
Listen, Marcus, ever since I came to this town, all I've heard is gossip. Silly gossip. First about you and then about me. I don't care what you do, but I'm not going to let it upset my life because I'm not like you and Brooke and the rest of this town. I've had to fight for everything I've gotten. And I'm not afraid to fight. It's too bad you are. Good night, Marcus. Good night. Marcus, where are you going? Maybe all of us small town Napoleons are the same. Now I feel like walking. Care got a death, Mark. Sorry, Jerry. What are you doing rolling around at this hour, you nuts? It's five o'clock in the morning. Thought you left on your milk route at four. You're late. Uh, Mark, what is she working? An all night beanery? buy the paper this morning, Mark. There wasn't any on the porch when I got up. I think it best, Bourne, that you stay away from the bank for a few weeks. Stay away? With pay, of course. Oh, I had two weeks' notice. No, 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 of course not. Uh, merely a protection for all of us. We cannot preserve the dignity and routine of this bank if it's to become a mecca for curiosity seekers and a police investigator who interrupts business to annoy everyone with questions. Questions about your habits outside of this bank. That's Mr. Dolan's business. It's everyone's business now. You seem to have upset the peaceful routine of this entire town. When I went to bed last night, he was still sitting out there in the front porch, and it was almost 11 o'clock. I didn't hear him snoring last night. In fact, I don't think he was in his room at all. He was 10 minutes late for breakfast, and then he left without eating it. It was the first time he ever did that. Personally, I think there are other things more important than him taking a newspaper. I can't say what other things, because I didn't actually see the mud on Mark's shoes. He was just about here, see? On his way up the stairs. And I was, uh, well, I was right about here. And I said, uh, where does she work, Mark? In an all-night beanery? 
Well, naturally, I expected the guy to answer me. But he don't. He just keeps walking right on up the stairs. And then's when I noticed the mud on his shoes. And then what did you do, Mr. Murphy? Well, I, uh... Well, Dolan, I turned just like this and walked to the door. Grab my hat and open the door. Hello, Jerry. Oh, Miss LaSalle. Oh, Jerry, Aunt Jenny, take this pie for your mother. Thanks. Don't you think you better look in Bourne's room for those muddy shoes? Right up here. You'll have to excuse us. We're right in the middle of a very important investigation. You'll have to excuse me. I'm in the middle of a very important errand. I'll admit they are a sight. I was just taking them down to be cleaned. What happened to them? What's it to you? Well, I'm Brad Dolan, a special investigator. Oh. Well, I went for a walk last night, and the country roads have been quite muddy since the rain. It's become very dangerous for a young lady to be out alone at night in this vicinity. I wasn't alone. I was with Marcus Bourne. Thank you. Well, Marcus, have any trouble cleaning your shoes? What time did we come in? Five o'clock. Of course I'm sleepy. I'm not used to coming in at five in the morning. Suppose you want to see me now. No. Miss LaSalle explained everything. Thank you, Elaine. For what? Saving you? Yes. Well, don't be silly. I did that for myself. You don't think I want the local gossips to know about my midnight walks, do you? Look, Marcus, I've just begun a new life in Medallion, and it doesn't no, include... No, please don't. You've already said too much. You should have let me go away thinking that you lied on account of me. Go away? I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but... It would have been nice to think that Brooke had nothing to worry about, that I could believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you're not the murderer, don't I? Do you? I should know. I used to know one. said you were eating out. I've looked in every restaurant in town. Where have you been? In every restaurant in town? It isn't very pleasant trying to eat when people keep staring. I know a place where people won't stare. Smithfield. It's only 10 miles and there's a wonderful place to eat. The Smithfield Inn. Thanks, just the same, Brooke. Of course, if you'd rather be alone. No, I... Let's go, shall we, Marcus? I know, I'm very dull company. I didn't expect you to be bubbling over with conversation. Don't worry about me, just go ahead and think. Well, I'm tired of thinking, I'd rather talk. Okay, talk. Although I believe I know everything that happened to you today. Even about Helene LaSalle's shoes? Mrs. Murphy just couldn't resist telling me you were out walking with Miss LaSalle until five this morning. Helene was lying, wasn't she, Marcus? You see, I was up early and met Father on the service porch. It's the first time I've ever seen him clean his own shoes. Knowing that, you must doubt me. Oh, no, Marcus. Why not? Everyone else does. I'm even beginning to doubt myself. That's why I said I'm tired of thinking, because there's so much to think about. Today, I found myself remembering a book I'd read years ago. A mystery story. It's a story about a man who, who led two lives. By day, he was just an average person. By night, he was a maniac killer. There are hundreds of stories like that. The man had strange lapses of memory. He himself didn't know he was a murderer. But that's impossible. It never happens in real life. No. It couldn't be true, could it, Brooke? Thank you, Brooke. Your dinner idea was wonderful. I certainly enjoyed it. I can hardly realize it's 12 o'clock. At least it's not 5 in the morning. Just the same, if you need an alibi, don't hesitate to call on me. I'm sorry. Oh, I hope I won't need any more alibis. 
I hope things will quiet down so I can leave in a few days. I'll miss you, Marcus. I'll miss being around to advise you about your problems. Although when you needed me most, I wasn't much help, was I? It's too bad Elaine LaSalle isn't leaving instead of you. Oh, well. It'll work out all right. Good night, Marcus. Good night. Jenny? Cy Walt, my goodness, haven't you gone to work yet? Just starting now. This is the day I read the meters on our street. Isn't that a shame? She's gone already. Who? Helene. I guess she left before I got up. Anyway, she's gone. Her bed's all made. I didn't come to meet her. I came to read the meter. Oh. Of course, it's right at the foot of the steps. I know, I know. I've only done it a hundred times. Aunt Jenny! Aunt Jenny! Helene! Helene! Huh? She's Sorry. dead! I say huh? she's dead! Helene is dead! <coughs> Helene! Oh, sorry! Don't go down there, Aunt Jenny! Helene! No, no. Aunt Jenny! Get hold of yourself. Sorry. In the basement. Wait for me, Jerry. What happened? Did she fall? Fall? She was murdered. Strangled. <coughs> Marcus. Tell the DA I'll call him back as soon as I've questioned Marcus Bourne. Find him. I don't need to find him. He's here now. Yes, he walked in five minutes ago at uh, 8.38. In fact, he was the one that told us LaSalle was dead. I can't stop to talk to you now, Mickey. We've got two policemen here from Indianapolis and... No, Marcus ain't come back yet and I hope he don't. All he causes me is trouble. Here it is around noon and I haven't even got Cy Walsh's lunch on the stove. I don't know, Elsie. I can't see the police station from here, but I sent Gladys over at 5 o'clock and she said they still had Marcus in there. And there's thousands of people milling around outside. He isn't home yet. He's still at the police station. Well, it's almost 7 o'clock. Then you can't remember any place else you might have been last night. Think, Marcus. Did you take another one of them walks? I went to Smithfield for dinner. I arrived back at the house at 12 o'clock and I went right to bed, that's all. Now may I go? I've been here all day. I'm sorry, I can't let you go yet, Bourne. Orders. Who was with you at Smithfield Inn? Whose car did you take? Marcus, you've got to answer this one. Everything's against you. Everybody thinks you did it. Why, even Mamie. Uh, that's Mrs. Charters. Yes, I know. It's too bad the family or someone didn't see you after 12 o'clock. Why does it matter, Mr. Dolan? You haven't even any circumstantial evidence. Only the girl was killed at 12 o'clock, and that's when you said you went to bed. Elaine and I were very good friends, Mr. Dolan. Yes, I know. I called the Smithfield Inn. The waiter said you'd been there with a the young lady. That's right. Oh, come in, Miss Hammond. Why are you holding him, Mr. Charters? Well, you see, Brooke, we don't really want to hold him, but this time Marcus hasn't got any alibi for his actions. Especially for what he did after 12 o'clock last night. Didn't he tell you? No. No, he wouldn't. We were together last night. Yes, I know. You had dinner at the Smithfield Inn. You took him home in your car and dropped him off in front of his house at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock? Did he say that? Yes. Why, Marcus, we didn't get home till after 2.30. Why didn't you tell us that? Because your father has forbidden us to see each other. I know you want to protect me, Marcus. But after all, in a case like this, you come first. Well, Mr. Charters, I guess you can sleep tonight. You haven't arrested anyone yet. Yes, Bourne, you can go. You're free again. But I'll be around for a few days. 
Well, nice to have seen you again, Miss Hammond. Thank you. Now, tell me, why did you lie? There are several reasons. Yes? Because... I hated Helene, and I'm glad she's dead. You said there were several reasons. I... I... You do doubt me after all. You wanted to leave Medallion. Why don't you go tonight? Now. That book I read about the man who didn't know he was a murderer. You said that couldn't happen in real life. It wasn't what you said, wasn't it? There's a train at nine. And I said it just couldn't be true, could it, Brooke? What was it you said then? I'll even drive you to the station. You can get your ticket on the train. And then you said... What train are you talking about? The train. The train that will take you away from here. Away? Where would I go? Is there a place where there aren't any people? People who stare, people with faces like Cy Walsh, Sally Lukens, and Jerry Murphy. Even if there were a place, I could never be alone. Because there's someone else, something else. It's a sound. The sound of someone walking behind me. When I turn around, there's no one there. Just footsteps. Whispering footsteps. Can't you understand that, Brooke? Please try to understand. Marcus, do! Do you see what fear does to you, Brooke? I wouldn't hurt you for the world. I'll drive you to the train. But I'm not leaving, Brooke. Didn't you hear what Mr. Dolan said? I'm free. Oh, no, Marcus. Father knows what time I came home last night. He'll tell. He just loved to tell on you. Marcus! Marcus! Tell on me. Tell on me. Tell on me. What right is he to tell on me? That's the trouble with guys like you. You never get to be bank president. You've upset the peaceful routine of this entire town. You never even have enough money to buy an interest in a dime store. I saw you talking to Brooke, and I really don't think you should see her so much. Even when you're right, you're wrong. I think it best, Vaughn, that you stay away from the bank for a couple of weeks. Don't see her so much. Stay away from the bank. Don't see her so much. Stay away from the bank. Don't see her so much. Stay away from the bank. Don't see her so much. Stay away from the bank. Daphne? What do you want? I thought you were at the police station, locked up. Why, Harry? How'd you get out? I'm going to call. I wouldn't if I were you. It might put Brooke in a very bad light. Brooke? Yes. She provided my alibi this time. Last time, if you remember, it was Helene. When did you see Brooke? Until 2.30 this morning. That's a lie. Brooke came into this house at 12.15. You wouldn't tell that, would you, Harry? Certainly I'd tell it. I'd just love to tell it. Yes, Brooke said you would. When I heard her say that, I realized how much I hated you. How I've had everyone ruin my life. Particularly you. Keep away from me, Vaughn. <laughs> Don't, Marcus! Don't kill me! Kill you? I could have. I wasn't afraid to. You don't understand that, do you, Harry? But you see, for years I've hated Medallion, the bank, and you. But I never had any courage to do anything about it. But now I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid to leave. I'm not afraid of anything any longer. You understand that, don't you? No. You'd never understand what it means to be free from fear. But I know Brooke will, someday.
Be quiet, Rosie. What's the matter? Shut up. Well. You better not tell me to shut up. No. Cy, call the police. Well, Cy, why don't you call the police? You afraid of me? interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special bulletin from Indianapolis. The unknown man whose brutal murders of beautiful young women terrorized three states has been found. The maniac killer was just apprehended near Medallion, Ohio. He is Merrick Brom, 30-year-old steel worker of Detroit, Michigan. Brom's signed confession completely clears Marcus Bourne of Medallion, whose unfortunate resemblance to the killer caused him to be an important suspect. Now, we return you to the music of the Indianapolis Symphony Hour. <laughs> 